Hello, everyone. I'm HuffPost Lee Blickley, and welcome to Build Series. Welcome these two wonderful ladies. Um, we have Jackie Hoffman and Susan Lucci here for Celebrity Autobiography, which is a different kind of show for you guys, but it's a, it's a comedy show where they read um, from celebrity memoirs that are actually in the words of celebrities themselves. So thank you so much for joining us. I believe the words. <laughs> So yes, how did you guys each get involved in this project? Because it's been it's been going on for a few years now, right? Well, they they latched onto me before they became big enough to hunt real celebrities. I think I was in Xanadu at the time, and they just they got Tony Roberts and me and Mary Test, and I think we did like their very first thing in New York ever, ever, at a theater that no longer exists called the Zipper Theater. The first time uh, I did Celebrity Autobiography was about three years ago out in East Hampton because they moved this show around uh, in New York, in L.A., and as it says here, we couldn't make this stuff up. I mean, we have been asked to read from other celebrities' autobiographies. Um, Justin Bieber, I think, has written three. Is he 23? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of amazing when you hear the words out loud. And um, Ralph Macchio does the best Arnold Schwarzenegger I have ever heard. It's very surprising and funny and wonderful. Yeah, do you guys put on impersonations? You put on voices when you're reading from these memoirs? That's kind of not the idea. You kind of lean in to capture the spirit, I think, of the person that you're reading. Through the years, I've seen it evolve, and it's kind of grown and descended to people doing impersonations <laughs> because it's so irresistible, and the audience loves it. But the words themselves are, like Susan says, it's unbelievable what people think are appropriate. People would be interested in what Sylvester Stallone has in his freezer. You know, it just bizarre things. What is, what is in his freezer, Jim? Oh, you know, I, I rem tofu cuties. The actual quote, yeah, it's it's kind of unbelievable. So you just let you know, you just let the words speak for themselves. I mean, you don't have to do anything. It's kind of like a sweet gig that way. Do you guys prep? Do you read the memoirs before, or do you like to just get on stage, open the book, and just start and discover with the audience? I, I definitely prep. Uh, let's see. I'm I'm going to be reading from Ivana Trump, and from Liz Taylor. And, uh, and it, they're so well constructed. Gene Pack and his wife um, created several celebrity biography. And um, when I'm reading from Liz Taylor, somebody else is reading from Debbie Reynolds. Somebody else is reading from Eddie Fisher. And it's all that triangle that took place during Cleopatra. And uh, it's very funny to hear them all tell their own versions. And, and it's in all of their own words. It's also Richard Burton. The first year I did it, Alec Baldwin was Richard Burton to, to my Liz Taylor. He is hysterical and wonderful, as we all know. I mean, he, he's nothing he can't do. And um, I'm also going to be reading from Kim Kardashian. Oh my God. Are you going to be Courtney or Chloe? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I, I hope it can be sisters. I've, I haven't been told anything yet. They like to throw things at me. But I know I am reading the words of one Ms. Susan Lucci. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Very excited. Susan, when did you write your memoir? Oh, um, about five years ago, uh, and um, yeah, they asked me if I would mind. Um, Mario Cantone had done it at one point, but never in front of me, and I, I just thought, what a fun, great idea, and then they said Jackie Hoffman was going to read, and of course, my mind is like, oh my God, I wonder what part she's going to read, <laughs> and I'm going to sound I'll ridiculous. give you a hint. I warmed up for it by losing an Emmy. <laughs> That would be a good choice. <laughs> speaking, speaking of your Emmy lot, did everyone remember? Do you have, did you guys watch her clip screaming "Damn it!" when Laura Dern won the Emmy? You were just your Twitter is on fire. Unlike you, I made a public spectacle of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Susan, how did you really feel? <laughs> um, so you're reading Susan Lucci's, but you can't tell us who else, who other, what other memoirs you're reading. I, I literally don't know. I mean, Sunday night I'll get an email, or not. Yeah, or not, or but sometimes I've, you walk yeah, in and I've they just Yeah, I've done like say. group ones many times before, you know, Backstreet Boys or whatever crazy stuff they do, so I, I can wing it. And so you're in, there's three shows coming up in New York, uh, two in the city and one in Long Island, and so you're doing the Long Island one and the New York City one on Monday, correct? Correct. So will it be the same show, or do you guys switch up the memoirs per every different show? They switch them up, yeah. right? Yes. I mean, That's they up switch to the creators. Them up. I, 
I, show up. Yes, I show up. I'm and the I side man. <laughs> and I think it depends on, on the cast who's available and like that. I think that's partly how they make their decision. So what has been the craziest memoir that you've read for the show that you just couldn't believe uh, was published? <laughs> That is a good question. I wish we had time to prep for it. <laughs> <laughs> Who? God, they're all so bizarre. <laughs> I think, I mean, maybe Ivana's definitely up there. Um, the, the, just the, the brashiness and the callousness of her. Um, but fun to play. I think Stallone, um, the, someone, uh, Poor David Cassidy about you know uh, writing about how he couldn't have sex with his on TV sister. I mean, it, it's just a series of bizarre. They're all kind of train wrecks in their own way. And and uh, as I said, Ralph Macchio does the best Schwarzenegger I've ever seen. And so there's a, a scene I'm going to call it, but it's real life. Uh, Schwarzenegger speaking to himself in the mirror: "Your body is a temple." <laughs> And he goes on from there. He and does it much really better. This is really in his book. He wrote those words himself. Your yes. body is a temple. Yes. That's the whole, that really encapsulates <laughs> the entire experience. Because as an audience member, you're saying, really? In the book? <laughs> they wrote this themselves? I mean, that's what, the, that's the whole evening in a nutshell. That's crazy to hear that. So, um, so you're preparing for Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. What goes into preparing for someone like playing Kim Kardashian and reading her words aloud? Oi. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I do, I mean, I do prep. So, I mean, I will watch interviews, you know, that she's done. One thing I've noticed with Kim Kardashian is there never seems to be any urgency. <laughs> do you see that, Jackie? <laughs> right? They just have all the time in the world and not a care and, yeah. You gotta get the voice right, though. Just watch some episodes and mm -hmm. eat some salads. What else would the Kardashians do these days? <laughs> Makeup lines and mm -hmm. so. When was her memoir published? I, you know, I don't really don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I guess Courtney and and uh, Chloe must have also written written because when I have done Kim Kardashian, I I will do it with Courtney and and Chloe, mm -hmm. and their words seem to be their own as well. So I'm guessing they've all written their own. Right. They're very gifted at doing mashups. Like they'll take all the Kardashian books and put them together or they'll do something called mom wars and it's celebrity moms who have written about their children or So you're so up there together on stage and everyone's reading from a different memoir but it's making like a story. Right. They have individual segments and group segments. Cool. Yes, so that we're not all on stage all at the same time. You know, there'll be a group uh, doing uh, musicians uh, Justin Bieber, Dolly Parton, I mean, the gamut. And there'll be others doing athletes and politicians. Right, and now they've merged because uh, I believe Ivana wrote a book, Ivanka wrote a book, and of course Donald wrote about himself, mm -hmm. God knows how many times over. <laughs> so they've merged those. Oh, who's reading? Are you guys doing a Donald Trump, like a Trump family reading? Well, this time it's funny. They asked me to do Ivana solo, mm -hmm. which I have done. But, but mo more recently, I was doing um, with Alan Zweibel. Uh, playing Donald and uh, spectacular, and I think Brooke played um, Ivanka, but uh, again, it just I think it just depends on the availability of of the cast. Yeah. So, how did you guys initially get involved, and what makes you uh, you know enjoy doing this? Because this must be such a fun show to be a part of. It really well, is. it's just like I said, it's just it's just mindless. <laughs> it's stealing someone else's laughs. What could be better than that at their own expense? <laughs> So there's sadism involved, there's a false feeling of superiority. <laughs> this person's a lot more famous than me, but boy, do they sound stupid right now. That's a good reason to do it. Yeah, it's effortless, you don't have to write, you don't really, you know, unless you're Susan, you don't rehearse. And, you know, it, it's, just a, it's just a good time. It's just a mindless gig and it's a, a cheap laugh. And as you know from the Emmys, I live for a cheap laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that kind of how you got, or why you got involved too, Susan? Is just the mindlessness of it? 
Uh, well, also the fun of it. I mean, somebody had told me they they had been to Celebrity Autobiography when it was here in New York. I never heard of it. And so, and they told me somebody, I think that was when I heard that Mario Cantone had, had read from mine. And I had no idea what any of that was about, but it sounded like a lot of fun. And then Gene Pack uh, contacted me. I'm sure the way they contacted Jackie. And, and that was it. And because I had heard of it and it sounded like such a fun concept, um, I, I said yes. And the first year, I only did Elizabeth Taylor. And what I love about him, Jackie mentioned the, the matchup, matchups. Uh, so from, you know, there are a number of us reading the same story, but just from our own points of view, uh, which is already a funny idea. But then to hear everybody's words, their own words that they thought were really important. And some of the some of the autobiographies are also from the golden age of Hollywood. So you have Zsa Zsa Gabor and, you know, Hedy some Lamar. of Hedy Lamar, yes. I mean, even Liz Taylor, there has to be so much scandal in her memoir. Could, can you like remember a moment when you were on stage reading, especially about the Debbie Reynolds and the love triangle? Was that like uh, really fun to play out on stage? So much fun to play out. And there's Mike Todd. And the words that went between these people and the things that happened are pretty fun to play. Yeah, <laughs> so who are your fellow celebrity castmates? I know I heard Richard Kind is going to do um, the Long Island show, and um, I think it's at the Landmark Theater. Mm -hmm. um, Janine Garofalo is going to be a part of it. And she'll be there Monday night at, um, at the Triad. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So do you guys get a chance to watch each other perform backstage? Yes, you do. There's really no backstage. It's a, it's a tiny club, and you can stand at the back, or it's usually packed, so you stand up, and you, know, you can either hang out on the couch in the green room and talk to great people you respect, or watch them on the stage, rip other people apart. Just not talk to them at all. No. <laughs> they get great people to do this. Awesome. Like I, I, look, I, haven't, I haven't gotten the chance to see the show. I would love to, um, because again, I've heard so much about it. Um, but what has been one of your favorite celebrities who performed just so well uh, a certain memoir? Yourself. I love, <laughs> there was a, a there was one they do of Burt Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson. That's really hilarious. And I think I did that with, with Tony Roberts, who was a brilliant Burt Reynolds. And uh, she's, there's a scene where they're discussing a scene, I guess it's a mashup of both their autobiographies. And she's, he's discussing that she spends way too much on gowns and keeps buying $10,000 gowns, and he said, she says, I can't wear a dress once it's been photographed. He said, what do you do with them? I give them to poor people. <laughs> and Tony Roberts is Burt Reynolds saying, you give a $20,000 dress to a poor person? Where are they going to wear it? The Poor Person of the Year Awards? <laughs> so that was one of my all-time favorite moments, I think. What about you, Susan? I love standing backstage and watching watching other people. I mean, I keep on bringing up Ralph Macchio. He was such a surprise to me, uh, uh, reading the way he did um, Schwarzenegger. Uh, you know, I, I really love Ev Ivana, and I love that matchup. And you can't believe the words when there were the three of us, Donald and Ivana and Ivanka. You can't, again, you can't believe it. And even um, Ivana on her own. You can't believe it. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, that was the first one I ever read. It's astounding. How, now, if they went back and wrote some new memoirs, what do you think would be in these books? I think they probably, if they saw the show, they would want to go back and yeah. write <laughs> new memoirs. Right. Does it make, Jackie, does it make you want to sit down and write your own memoir? Uh, no. <laughs> Where would you start if you, if you had, you know, if you... If someone forced you to write a memoir, where would you start, and what kind of tone would it would you have? Oh, <laughs> maybe when I was 11 years old and first watched All My Children. Oh. Oh. That's actually a good segue, because I did want to get into your careers before I toss off get to the hers. audience. Get into hers. Yes. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit ba backstage about how All My Children has now been off the air for almost seven years. Um, how does that, does it feel like a blink of an eye, or does it feel like an eternity ago? <laughs> Yeah, both, yeah. both. Uh, I was lucky when I left all my children to, to do um, Mark Cherry's show, Devious Mates, for four seasons. And I never thought that I was going to find uh, another work family. And I was told I probably never would, because all my children was just a very special place, an ensemble 
with the crew and the cast and the production, you know, from top to bottom. And so was Devious Maid. So I count myself really, really lucky. And if you're going to follow Erica Kane, you have to do it with a character named jean vive de la Tour, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, so that was really so a stroke of luck for me. Um, but I miss uh, all my children very much. I, I, I just count my lucky stars you. that I got to play. <laughs> oh, Jackie. Oh, lived for it. On the VCR. We would tape oh, it on the VCR. Right. I remember VCR. So flattered, God. What's your favorite All My Children moment, Jackie? Oh, my God. When Erica, it's always all about Erica. That's what it should be called. All about Erica. Um, when you, you won an award, you were at a podium, and it was after Mona Kane died. And you made this meltdown speech. I think that was when you were still under the influence of the dolls, of the pills. <laughs> and this brilliant moment, and I remember I was watching it with my dear friend Kelly. We always used to watch it together. And it was such a stupendous moment that I remember her saying, is she leaving the show? Because she turned out such a killer, you know, like Jimi Hendrix lighting fire to the guitar. <laughs> moment that we're like, what, what's happening? Is this Erica Kane's last moment? Where is she going? And it was so stupendous. And she, she just melted down and she just lost her mother. And she, I, I miss my mother. I miss my mother. I, 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 I fell apart. You still have then some they cut VCR. to the actor playing Joe Martin and he made this beautiful face. You see, you see how deeply you affect. People. Thank you. I mean, my God. I, I think she still so has this on that VHS tape, oh. and she plays it whenever she <laughs> gets. That's right. There's a dusty collection. <laughs> Susan, do you ever, do you even remember shooting that scene? Sure, I do. Yeah, of course I do. Forty years you played Erica Kane. What was it like to play a character for forty years? I, it sounds ridiculous, you know, when when it's said like that. And I remember look, she doesn't even look forty. I'm <laughs> like, how did you play a character for forty years? But I would walk into the studio every day. I mean, I would sing inside my inside voice. You know, I'd be singing. I'd be so happy. And I think, you must be crazy. You've been doing this a very long time, but you're that happy to come to, to, to do this. First of all, you know, there's a built-in freshness because it's a new script every day. It's a blessing and a curse. It's a lot of material. It's a lot of volume. But I was so lucky to play this character and Agnes Nixon's writing and this wonderful cast. You mentioned Joe Martin, uh, Ray McDonald, who played him, and on and on and on. Fra Heflin, who played Mona, Erica's mother. It was such rich material and very much uh, groundbreaking ahead of its time. And so I just felt so lucky. I mean, I'd read a script and say, oh, wow, wow, I'm going to get to do that. So it was fantastic. Right. For people who too, are too young to remember, I mean, Agnes Nixon and all my children, we, all, the, the, they really were groundbreaking. They, there was a school teacher who comes out to his class. He's teaching them about the Holocaust and he's showing like different color uh, stars that people would have to wear. And he took a pink triangle and I would have worn this because I'm gay. I mean, things like that, that were these stupendous people would take them as fluffy, oh, soap operas, they're light, fluffy entertainment for housewives, which is when they first came on the scene, they had that reputation. And this, they went really deep and, and they were very daring. Yeah, how do you feel about like the state of soap operas today? Because a lot of them, there's three or four left on the air, uh, which probably has to do with a lot of women now going to work and having to work even though they have children at home. And they're more expensive to, yeah. to produce than, than some of the reality uh, shows that have taken their place. I'm really sad to see see them go away. And I know many, uh, now that I'm out in daylight, uh, you know, going through airports and, and on the street, I'm, you know, people stop me as if, as if uh, all my children w was still part of their lives. And I think, I think when the writing was really good as it was with Agnes, uh, I think people do hold on to it and did. And it was it was really destination TV too. People made sure to be home at a certain time to to watch. And there's a lot of TV on now and a lot of really great TV. But there was some good good stuff being done in the daytime too at that time. I used to watch Passions religiously as a, a oh. teenager. Oh well, then you saw my daughter. Yes, I did. Yes, so oh. Passions is the best. I loved it too. But you're talking about great TV. I have to throw it over to Jackie, who just was in Feud. Um, did everyone watch Feud? What a great series that was. Um, 
So Susan, now is your chance to tell Jackie how great food was and how great <laughs> Maybe she didn't see it. We don't know. Put her on the spot. But what was it like to be a part of that? That was oh you know, my I'm god. With Ryan what what could that be it like? It was fabulous, and you were fabulous. Yes, I, of course I, I mean, saw it. It was it was thrilling. It was a pinch me. I can't believe this is my life moment. You know, one to one with Jessica Lang, and it, it was just it was just an incredible experience. Beautiful writing and getting to Paul all the objects, the magnificent sets, and and getting to relive such a great period in history and create this great character, this bizarre, incredibly cool character. character. Yes. Yes, and there's actually a speech that, uh, the one episode where they let me speak, um, <laughs> there's actually a speech in episode four that Mama Sita makes that talks about how women in film is going to become such a necessary moment in the world. And it's really that, it's really the whole me too kind of it, it really is at at that point this was before that whole story exploded and before that whole movement exploded and she talks about how the population is going to be mostly made up of women and films by women and for women and starring women are going to be a major necessary part of the culture Reflected if i were famous it would have gone viral <laughs> i saw you in gilmore girls too there yes that it, did you guys watch gilmore girls last year She's in it. Make sure you look out for, for a her. second. Um, I do want to open up to these beautiful people in the audience for some questions. Hi, we're going to take our first question from an online viewer. Leslie would like to know, at this point in your careers, are there still any dream roles you would like to play? Erica Kane. <laughs> <laughs> she is a dream role, that's for sure. Um, probably Maggie, the cat in, cat in a hot tin roof. I still think Tennessee Williams wrote some of the best wo women's parts ever known. That'd be fun. Uh, Martha and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, mm -hmm. or any lead in anything. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Hello, ladies. Hello. I wanted to know what celebrities would you like to read your memoirs, and what scene of your life would you like them to read? Oh, that's such a great yeah, question. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, Jackie thinks about that. I, I mean, I think exactly what's going to happen Monday night at the Triad Theater, uh, that I, this fantastic Jackie Hoffman is going to read from, from my memoir. And uh, that's pretty special for me. Oh, you're so gracious. Well, now I have to say Susan. <laughs> uh, I would like Benjamin Netanyahu to read about how I always got kicked out of class in yeshiva. I met Benjamin Netanyahu Good, last right, year when he was guy. here. For, yes, for the UN. I happened to be checking into a hotel, uh, he, and one of our times overlapped. And I saw him come come into the dining room in the morning for breakfast. And um, the place was crawling with Secret Service, as you can imagine. And I, I must have had this huge smile of adoration on my face. And the Secret Service guys uh, were very close to us. I was with my college friends. They must have thought we looked very dangerous, so they were guarding <laughs> us. And But I was smiling, and the one man said, would you like to meet him? I said, are you, are you kidding? And he said, no, it would be okay. Now, there are German shepherds with these guards, too. And I, I said, really, can I? He said, yeah, just go on over there. And my girlfriends from college were saying, take your cell phone, take a picture. So I had my cell phone in my hand, and I went over to Mr. Netanyahu and just told him how much I admire him. And I had just heard him give an incredible speech to the UN and had sat at home by myself in tears just listening to him and watching him. And uh, his wife was with him and she was very gracious as well. And I went back to my table with my cell phone still, you know, hidden in the palm of my hand. And my girlfriend said, did you take a picture? Did you take? I could not. I could not bring myself ever to, to interrupt. But I took a picture up here. And yeah. I'll never forget it. People don't do that anymore. They just try to get the picture on your phone. You should remember it. Mm -hmm. Is that in your memoir? No, this was after my memoir. <laughs> we need another memoir. <laughs> another memoir, part two. And you got to start writing yours so that could happen. Yes. We have time for one more question. Hi. Um, so is there any celebrity that might not have written a memoir yet that you'd be interested in reading? 
these people are so smart. <laughs> What's smarter than me? You used to like the questions after Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. How do you do the trick with the gum? <laughs> Who's humble and smart, who like wouldn't be brash enough and stupid enough to write an autobiography and you want them to write an autobiography? Pete Seeger, but he's dead. Did he? Did he? No, I don't think he did. Yeah, because he's seen so much history and he was such a political figure and a figure in the entertainment world. That's, that's my answer. Just um, an instant response, Sophia Loren. And she uh, may have already, I don't know, but uh, I think she's gorgeous and timeless. And also, I'd love to hear her take on, on growing up during World War II in, in Europe. Did we, does anyone know if she has a memoir out there? We need a memoir expert in this I room. I think biographies have been written by other people about her, but I don't know if there's an, there's an autobiography. Well, this show, Sounds awesome. I can't wait to see it. It's on Monday uh, in the city at the Triad Theater, and then uh, March 5th, and then March 9th in, at the Landmark Theater in Port Washington, wait, wait, Long Island. Car. Yes. And then again, March 10th at the Triad Theater. But you're on Monday, right? I'm on Monday night. That's great. I am uh, at QVC on the other two days, but believe me, Ooh, start shopping. part of it. QVC <laughs> and this is great. Thank you both so much for Thank being you. here. And we have a 7 o'clock curtain at the Triad. What time is it in Port Washington? Do you know? Oh, well, there's a big time difference from Manhattan to Port Washington. <laughs> well, I didn't know if you have an 5 o'clock Port curtain. Washington. I don't know. Okay. Susan, I literally Sorry. don't know anything until like an hour before the event. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't know about today. <laughs> but you made it. You made it and you Literally, delivered. my managers had to, okay, we'll see you tomorrow at AOL Build It. What? <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow at AOL Build. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.